Hands up. Who of you thinks that much of the time you spend in school could have been used better? Me too. In 2012, a day before the final exam for my A-levels, I posted this. I, like many others, felt as a passive consumer of learning and that education happened to me. I thought, oh, so many of these 50,000 hours I spent in classroom were just a waste of time. I was frustrated. But I was also angry at all the adults. How hard can it be to create schools that enable children to keep their, their love for learning instead of destroying it? If you feel like the education system failed you or someone you know, this talk is for you. And even if you succeeded in the system, showed up, saved through exams, but still feel kind of dissatisfied with life, this is also for you. Let me explain. Since March 2012, I've been on a mission to uncover how and when we learn best. I've read everything I could find on the science of learning, a mix of cognitive and social psychology, neuroscience and brain research. I taught in schools, created online courses, I've worked with edtechs, NGOs and policymakers. And I've took what worked and condensed it into a weekly email, the Learn Letter, that has been read by over two million curious minds. You could say, I'm a learning junkie. And this talk is the quintessence of my biggest aha moments. It will help you master learning so you can unlock your potential. And it's not only useful for yourself, but also for parents, teachers and educators. So many people, Barbara Oakley, Robert and Elizabeth Bjork and Anders Ericsson have done brilliant research on optimal ways to learn. In fact, there's so much information out there, it can feel quite overwhelming. But don't worry, I've analyzed all the other 17 TED Talks on learning to make sure I don't repeat anything you already know. For example, we already know that your brain can change throughout your entire life something called neuroplasticity, and that you need about eight hours of sleep so your brain can clean itself and make new memories, and that you can remember information better through images and through stories, dual encoding. And there's a lot where science is clear, but that many people don't know yet. For example, did you know the learning style theory the belief that you learn better through your preference of auditory or visual material has been scientifically disproved. Neuroscientists like my favorite thinkfluencer Anne-Laure LeCanf are spreading the word. And yet, numerous studies show that 80% of people are not learning effectively. And the more I learned about learning, the more I realized that schools, universities, online classes, and even corporate trainings aren't built around how we learn. So, what follows are three insights you can use today that will change how you approach learning for faster and more permanent results. Are you ready? Let's go. Number one, forgetting is essential for learning. So it's a hot summer day in 2020, and I'm at a McDonald's in France. Ordering food should feel easy, because I had five years of French in school. But it isn't. I mumble, salut, before I give up and desperately point to a picture on the wall. Now, fast forward to 2017. Again in a restaurant, this time Santiago de Chile. I've only studied Spanish for four months, but I'm ordering food, making jokes, I'm even having conversations with waiters in Spanish. How? I'm no genius, and my brain is not better than yours. The following principle has been a big aha moment for me. Once you understand it, it will change how you can remember information forever within a few minutes every day. 
what you see here is that everybody forgets. Although science is not clear yet about the exact rate of forgetting, what we do know is that your ability to recall something from memory decreases over time. So let's say I tell you today, day zero, that your brain has 86 billion neurons. Very likely, two months from now, you can't recall this at all. Unless you interrupt your forgetting curve. Every time you retrieve the newly learned information, for example, by bringing up the 86 billion neurons in a conversation tonight, or thinking about them tomorrow, you increase your chance to remember. If you feel this has been kind of hard and painful, and it's been kind of difficult to actually do the work and try to remember stuff, but this is exactly where learning happens. Learning is deeper and more durable when practice is effortful. So don't just look at material when you try to learn something, but self-test. Now you might say, okay, this sounds interesting, but how can I possibly integrate this into my already busy life? There's an easy solution. Computerized flashcard programs. This is also how I learned Spanish so much faster than high school French. I used a software called Lingvist that helped me memorize 5,000 Spanish words in little time. And there are more tools you can use, like Anki or Neurocache, for all kinds of different purposes, like remembering birthdays, programming commands, or even life lessons. But you might object, enough, my brain is already full. What can feel like juggling too many pieces at a time is your working memory. Meanwhile, your long-term memory capacity is unlimited. The more you learn, the more you can remember. Radvansky, a researcher for human cognition, explains how learning depends on memory processes. Previously stored knowledge functions as a framework in which new information can be linked. Or in other words, learning is like a tree. Every time you learn something new, you create new branches. And the more branches, so-called cues you have, the easier it is to encode new information to them. Again, you might object, ah, this all sounds interesting, but I don't need fact learning. I have my phone and I can just Google it. Yes, of course, you can Google things. However, you can't outsource your memory to technology. There is no such thing as a second brain. Your short-term memory can only hold three to six items. And when you look something up, for example, through Googling or in your note-taking system, you use up the limited capacity available and not much space is left to process new information or to combine existing information with a new one so you can have new ideas. The goal of fact learning is not just to remember one random fact. It's to remember thousands which taken together form a schema that help you solve problems, think critically and make sense of the world. So congratulations, you just learned a few learning hacks. No, unfortunately you didn't. Sitting in lectures, like here, and listening doesn't guarantee you can remember anything at all. So let's do a quick exercise. What are three learning hacks? Think for yourself. Now, turn around and pair with your neighbor. Talk about it. What's learning hack number one I shared in the very beginning? Just shout it out. Yes, forgetting is essential for learning. And the second one is that learning is most efficient when practice feels hard. And the last one, about your memory. Anybody remembers? Shout it out. Yeah, your long-term memory capacity is vast. So, congratulations. You just learned three hacks about learning. 
The freedom and the confidence that comes from knowing how you can remember anything you want is revolutionary. And that brings me back full circle to where this talk started. If you remember, I left school feeling like a passive consumer of learning and that education happened to me. But it doesn't need to be that way. Learning science can improve how we shape education right now. It's something we all can do to help our kids, students, online and corporate learners. Education isn't something that happens to you. It's something you can co-create once you change how you approach learning. One of the big levers for transforming education systems is shifting power, which can be done by giving learners and educators more agency. Knowing how to learn is at the heart of it. So how do you do it? As a professor or educator or teacher, you don't need to do a major overhaul of your work. You can use the insights I offered to tweak your lesson design. Explain to your students why you're doing what you're doing and then also explain how learning works. I've implemented some of these tweaks in my online classes and I've seen my students' results become more meaningful and permanent. So school is only the start. See it as a stepping stone on your lifelong learning journey. I invite you to become curious about learning science so you can learn smarter and not harder. Whatever you do and wherever you go, never stop learning. Thank you.